Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents Podcast. I'm being joined by Sergeant Kicker. How's it going, man? What's up, man? And Chris, aka CGM. How are you doing? Pretty good. What's up? So uh, I don't know when you guys are hearing this. Most likely you're going to hear it sometime in early June, probably June 1st. Uh, but we are recording today on Memorial Day. Um, I got to say, and I hate to be that guy to go around and teach at people or talk at people. And Sarge, having, be a, having been a former service person, uh, I, can't, I can't imagine that this doesn't grind your gears, is people who don't really understand the point of Memorial Day. Um, I see a great deal of uh, people tagging stuff about like police officers. And that's great. Don't get me wrong. I'm all about, you know, blue lives matter and all that, but it's not for that. Sarge, can you, can you uh, clear the air once and for all and tell us as a former service member, what exactly is Memorial day and how are you to celebrate it and what you did today to celebrate it? Memorial Day is supposed to celebrate soldiers that gave their life for their country. It's not supposed to be for people like me that lived through their endeavors. That's why you have Veterans Day. That's why you have whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's supposed to do something nice to, to remember the fallen soldiers, fallen warriors that have fought for your country. And whatever country you hail from. It's right. just a way to, it, but really it's, you should, you should really go out and do something that's nice for, for a soldier that gave his life so that you have the opportunity to neglect him or her. Mm-hmm. So what we did, we went, we went, well, we had a barbecue. <laughs> nice. Went to the pool. <laughs> and what, what, what you guys grill up for some barbecue? It was just burgers, hot dogs. Oh, nice. My wife, my wife got these hot dogs. They're like, I call them porno size hot dogs. Oh, God. They're like they get 13 inch long them. and an inch around. Oh, my God. They're huge. But anyway. Um, <laughs> so Chris, don't give me ideas. <laughs> what we typically do is we, we go out to like a veterans memorial and clean it up. Mm-hmm. You know, when you say clean it up, are you... Nice. Are you we, uh, Pull weeds, leave flowers, do something, clean off the headstone, something like that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, I I uh, remember in 2013, I was out in Miramar, San Diego area in California, and we were on vacation, and it was Memorial Day weekend. And I remember our hotel concierge says, hey, they're doing a big thing over at Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery tomorrow uh, for Memorial Day. And I'm like, I've never even heard of it. And it is surreal. Uh, if, If you've seen it before or have heard of it, it's something that is truly mind blowing. I mean, I've I've been to the Grand Canyon and I've seen that, you know, and you kind of are at awe. To a certain extent, I had that same feeling going to this um, cemetery. Again, it's called Fort Rosecrans uh, Cemetery. It's a military cemetery. And literally, it's the same white, um, what do you call that? A gravestone? What what is that? A tombstone. It's the same white military tombstone as far as the eye can see in any one direction. Uh, it's super, super humbling. You can go up to any one um, stone and kind of see how old these young men and women were when they died. Um, some of them as young as 18 or six or not 16. It, it was 18. And some of them are really, really from a long time ago, like mid 1800s. So it's a kind of kind of an eerie place to be, but also it, it, it sends the point home that a lot, a lot, a lot of people died for you and I to have the life we, we're having today and enjoying the same liberties that we are having today. Um, the fact that we can go leave the house, lock our doors, go to our places of business, commerce, work, school, and come home safely without the fear of having bombs dropped on us overhead or 
or any kind of military airstrikes or anything like that. I think uh, we owe a tremendous debt to these men and women who uh, died to preserve our freedoms, uh, freedoms that they weren't able to enjoy themselves or reap the full benefits from. Absolutely. So. I mean, I always wanted to check out what Arlington looks like on Veter- on Memorial Days. Arlington Cemetery? Yeah. You ever been to Arlington Cemetery? No, but I am uh, Googling it right now. Arlington National Cemetery. Have you ever been to Fort Rosecrans? No. Okay. Oh, I'm looking at pictures of Arlington Cemetery, and it's it literally looks just like uh, Fort Rosecrans. Sim- similar thing. Yeah. No, that's... Um, if I'm not mistaken, Donald Trump was there today, wasn't he? I don't know. Yeah. I, I just... Lo- I'm not sure, but usually they do, like, some wreathing ceremony, I think. Yeah, I just Googled it. I Googled Arlington National Cemetery, and here's an article about uh, Donald Trump and his wife, actually, at the cemetery. So, but yeah, uh, it's um, it puts things into perspective for sure. Uh, you can look at the pictures all day on Google, but unless you're there, it the you know the point doesn't really hit home, or at least it didn't for me. So, but yeah, God bless everybody who's. Uh, who's put their life on the line for our country. And, you know, it, you, you see things on TV, and people who don't understand this point, they they go crazy. Sure, you see the Kaepernick thing with kneeling, or people take that as disrespecting our flag, but guess what? These guys and, and girls and women fought for their right to have an opinion, one that's different, doesn't necessarily mean it's right, but it fought for someone's right to free speech. And um, I think that's what makes us one of the best countries, if not the best country on the planet. It doesn't make their opinion right. No, it doesn't make it. It doesn't make it right. (laughs) I remember uh, one of my former supervisors said, uh, an opinion is like a butthole. Uh, Everyone has one. Some are... uh, what is it? Some are dumber than others, or something like that. But um, it's every excuses are like assholes. Everybody has one, and they all stink. There you go. That that was exactly it, actually. Good work. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I've always had a special place in my heart for Memorial Day. Um, and you know, it, it's cliche to say, you know, we hear it all the time on Mother's Day. Well, Mother's Day is every day. You're supposed to tell your mother you appreciate her every day. I agree. Uh, I don't think we should have a sanctioned day on the calendar where for 24 hours we appreciate uh, people who've lost their lives uh, protecting our country. I think that should be an ongoing thing. So what Sarge does, I think people need to do more. You know, if if you're available. Go out and and uh, put some flowers out on someone's gravesite, or uh, or just pull some weeds. Or clean pull it up some a weeds. Bit. Yeah, clean it up a little bit. You know, do your part. They paid the ultimate price, which was death. The least you could do is clean it up. And I'm sorry if I'm coming off as super preachy about this. Just something that no, matters. You are super preachy, but you know, it, it's something. it's something that matters to me. Um, and it's important. Anyway, switching gears. Chris, what's uh, your week been looking like this week? Uh, not too much. Uh, went to the uh, game, which I know you don't want to talk about. So, uh... <laughs> oh my God. correction that no one wants to talk about. Correct. Thank you, Sarge. So, well, what you're we'll talking about baseball, have... correct? Yep. Okay. Are you a season ticket holder? It seems like you go to a lot of games. I have a twenty game plan. Okay. Okay. Um, my voice is a little uh, raspy because I was booing the poor play I saw. Oh, God. Could you imagine, and, uh, Sarge, someone like uh, Chris in the bullpen? No. Not at all. I can't imagine that. Do you I can't even, imagine watching you baseball for the more, than, is, more than a day. The bullpen is where the relief pitchers are warm up. That, it, you, fans don't sit in the bullpen. Look, man. All, I see, all of that makes zero sense to me. I see, all I see on TV is old guys in pajamas chewing sunflower seeds. I don't know the difference, and nor do I care. Wrong. <laughs> Our Wrong. two best players are 
28, 20, and 21. And n- probably none of them speak a, li- speak a lick of English. Wrong. <sighs> Wrong. Anyway, so you went wrong. to a game. What else did you do? Uh, went Practicing out to my grandmother's 82nd birthday. 82nd birthday. What a legend. How many of those 87 years, 80, 82 years did she have to deal with you? <laughs> I guess 32. <laughs> that lady must be a saint. She got to she got to be a saint to deal with you. I feel I feel terrible for her. <laughs> what about you, Sarge? What was your week looking like this week? So I, so I get asked questions. I did a lot of cool stuff with my kids. Such as? I don't know. Just hung out Other went to the than, pool uh, a lot. Memorial Day. Hung out went to the pool a lot. Got to spend, you know, I had a long weekend so I got to spend some time with them. Nice. But I don't typically get to spend so is school out for summer? Because here in Vegas, I'm noticing more and more young people out in the streets uh, during working hours on weekdays. So I'm assuming school's out. Bro, my kids are two, not 12. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I, don't know, I feel like I've known you for a while. and like, I feel like your kids are much older than that. But I guess not. <laughs> I don't know anything about the school schedule. My kids don't go to school yet. Not yet. Don't worry. It'll go by quick, and before you know it, they'll be asking for the car keys. Oh, yeah? Do you have do you have kids of your own? Are you speaking from experience? I'm, exper- <laughs> I'm speaking from experience of being an actual kid. And I can tell you, my... Oh, oh, oh wait, I forgot about Josh. Josh is yours, right? I don't have any kids, and he is not my kid. And, of course, now that that's on air, <laughs> he's going to feed off of that. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Do you got were you guys uh subscribed to me back in late 2015, early 2016? Bro, do you have any idea how long I've been subscribed to you? I feel like you've been around for the longest time, but Chris is you, rather new. You were you were I'm not under, new. I've been over a year and a half. Yeah, but I've I been think, on YouTube much longer I than you have. I think you were under 500 subs. Yeah, you've been around for a while. Um do you remember I, I I'm blanking on his name, but the whole dad meme, I don't know what it is about it, but it's super cringy. And if you're the type that comes to my streams or anyone's streams for that matter and calls them dad and they're not your legitimate father, please stop doing it. It's super, super awkward. Uh, one person took it so far, in fact, back in late 2015, early 2016, that they actually emailed because my Twitter has my business email where it says email me for business inquiries only. They sent me adoption papers and it wasn't a meme it wasn't a joke (laughs) it wasn't a meme it wasn't a joke this kid literally said in a letter that he also emailed me that he hated his parents (laughs) he hated everything about their rules and he wanted to for me to adopt them and i have no interest in adopting anyone at this moment oh really at this moment so kids that Kids that need a nice home Listen, to live in don't interest you at all. At this moment, I have no interest in taking in anyone. Screw you, orphan. <laughs> fun having no parents. What well, about you, Chris? Christmas You're the one great. laughing. You go adopt somebody. It's a big undertaking. I don't know if I'm ready to be a parent. I think you should be. For, no one's ever ready to for, be a parent. I think parent. you should be a foster home. For kids that are in danger or being threatened, like a witness protection, because you're you can be their own bodyguard. Okay. Let me tell you, no one's ever ready to be a parent. No one is. I thought I was ready to be a parent. You know what happened? Life through your curveballs. The doctor said you're gonna have three. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, you're right. Life throws you curveballs. That's a baseball reference. Yeah, it just couldn't throw me any balls. I got three girls. Oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. I totally set you up for that one. That was not pre-planned, by the way. <laughs> the joke, not his kids. Well, my kids were totally planned. I, I'm sure they were. That's the way you're supposed to do it, I think. I'm a responsible... Man, because my wife makes me be one. Exactly. Exactly. So, 
I don't know what else is new this week. What else is going on? You guys got anything big coming up? I know um just to put this out there, I think we may have talked about it off air last week, but Sarge and I have both have vacations planned in January or January. Look at me. June. <laughs> we both have vacations planned in June. So most likely you guys will get one podcast or two podcasts um next month in the month of june uh i may not be going on mine oh you're not going anymore what happened i may i may not it my mother-in-law happened oh okay say no more (laughs) perfect i know exactly what that is okay scratch that then uh you guys will be get if he doesn't go on his vacation because we were going to go on separate weeks uh you guys will be getting you're only missing one week even That's if I do deal. go, I can I can probably get some time away from the kids long enough to, to be able to record. I'll just have to use my phone instead. Oh yeah, yeah, you use uh, Discord Mobile like Chris does. Well, it I works. do. It. Chris it does it fine. because he's it cheap by a headset. Yeah, it works. I mean, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but Chris has been using Discord Mobile to record all of our podcasts so far. So it definitely works. But that's good. I mean, it sucks that you can't go on your vacation, but at the at the same time, I want to see. I like my brother in law, and it's his birthday, and yeah, kind of sucks. But okay. Well, silver lining is we're only going to miss that one week in June then, because I won't be here to edit um, or record. One of the biggest problems with that is that my mother in law is once again dictating what my family does because she. she she is what she is. Crazy. Well, wait. Doesn't your wife listen to this podcast? My wife is in the living room. She can hear you saying this? Yeah. What a legend. See, I want to be brazen like Sarge when she'll, I grow up. She'll tell you herself. <laughs> Dang, bro. I want to be brazen like you guys when I grow up. I mean, up. it's not like anybody knows who my mother-in-law is that's on the stream right now. Or in the like listening to the podcast, so it's not like anybody's going to go back and say, "Oh my God, he said this about you," and <laughs> it's going to come back. Bro, you know, you know, your mother-in-law has been subscribed to this channel for his if podcast. She with would, notifications if she were to on. Randomly check out a podcast. This would be the one with notifications on every time we go live. No, you know she's lurking. That, that woman literally hates me right now. So, um. Well, speaking of your wife, do we have any more updates as far as when shirts are going to be available? The two and a half cents podcast official shirts? No, we've had so much going on this weekend. I didn't even really talk to her about it much. Okay. Okay. But at, at some point, there will be like an ordering site that, where they can she can put them up on like Etsy or something and we can send people yeah. that way. Yeah, we'll get it figured out. Sweet. Uh, I'm not going to make any promises on when it's going to happen, no. but we'll get it figured out. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. Um, I've been actually taking extra care with that shirt because um, I know there's special instructions on how to wash it. And some people actually last night uh, on our dual stream, which by the way, if you haven't been keeping up, me and Sarge have been, or on my last two streams on my channel have been dual streams, meaning that Sarge has also been streaming them on his channel at the very same time. So... Um, I know some people who were at my stream last night asked about the shirt, so um, there's definitely interest there for it. It's a great design too. It's been fun. People have also asked to be on the on the show. Yet every time we ask them to come on the show, they can't be found. Yeah, you know, since you brought it up, <laughs> well, I, let's get to it. Let's get to it. So we get quite a few people who don't necessarily comment on the podcast itself, but we'll come to my gaming live stream and they'll hear me and Sarge talk about, you know, briefly in passing, we'll be like, Hey, by the way, uh, we're going to talk about this. Like throughout us playing video games, we'll, we might talk about something and be like, Oh, that'd be great to talk about on the podcast. And then someone inevitably will always be in the chat saying, Hey, can I be on the podcast too? Well, you know me, I'm the type to uh, write things down. You tell me something, I'm going to write it down and make a personal mental note. I go to reach out to the person, not mentioning any names, and please don't. If you, you know who I'm talking about, don't mention any names. 
I go to reach out to somebody or some people, reference their uh, uh, their comment or tweet. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And I get no response. So here's the thing: we're gonna put this out there once and for all. If you have any interest in in being a guest on this podcast, just say something. Put it in a comment on this stream or on this podcast. Come to Sergeant's stream and let him know or let Chris know. Let me know. There's so many different ways you can communicate with us and let us know that you're interested. Um, but for sure, don't be the guy that bugs me and sends me multiple messages about wanting to come on a podcast and then never, never responds. Don't talk to me, scrub. Don't talk to me, peasant. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's like the people who uh, do the polls for your uh, streams, and then there's a hundred uh, answers in the poll for a certain game, and then and nobody 10 shows people up. Show up, yeah, yeah. This podcast brought to you by our bitching and complaining about the people who watch our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which, by the way, uh, if you are one of the few. The proud, the few. Uh, if you are one of the few that watches this podcast, we, from the bottom of all three of our hearts, uh, we want to thank you for allowing us to be part of your commute to work, your commute to school, your workout uh, companion at the gym. If you're listening, we we appreciate you. Uh, you are not just a number to us. Um, but more more importantly than that, if you are listening and you're tuning in on a regular basis, please give us your feedback. We want to make this podcast the very best it can be. Um, if you have any, if your suggestion is to get a certain person on a podcast, let us know. We'll reach out to that person and we'll see if we can get them on. Uh, if you have a suggestion as far as like different topics we can talk about or things you want to see us talk about, let us know as well, and we'll make sure that we talk about that on our next podcast. Um, now, if you would like to be a number, we can arrange for you to have a number. We can we can go full DMV on you guys if you want. I have no problem with that. <laughs> oh, don't get me started on the DMV. Oh my goodness! Oh, here we go. No, I, I'm for once. I think I have to agree with uh, Chris here. I've never once had a good experience at the DMV. It's always been bad. No, oh, because they're all fucking drones. <laughs> yeah, did you robot? <laughs> we were just watching a movie where um, oh, man. this rabbit is trying to be a police officer in in like an animal rule, ruled community, uh-huh. and um, everybody gives her crap because she's a rabbit and she's in a world with like predators and whatever, and she wants yeah. to be a cop. Um, <laughs> so she goes to the DMV, like track. Get she gets a a tip on a case, so she goes to DMV, and uh, everyone working in the DMV is a sloth. They do everything stupid slow. They talk slow. They <laughs> move slow. The guy tries to tell a joke, and he does it so slow you forget what he's talking about halfway through it. But how true is that, though? That's very true. We see that in real life. I've had decent experiences at some DMVs, but not but many. You, but you're never in and out, right? No. Is no, it safe it's, to no say? It's, always, it's always an ordeal. It's no, always it's always something. a line. In any place you have to go, I'm just going to say this. Any place that's customer service oriented that you have to go, mm -hmm. and they have multiple armed security guards, you know <laughs> it's a shithole. Yeah. You also know that there's a chance that Raining Ravens works there. Okay. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing I think I would never be able to do that and uh, what are the guys in the blue shirts the uh, TSA no, I, I could not TSA. do TSA and grope people I couldn't do TSA and I couldn't do uh, the DMV secretary of well, state the DMV is a rent-a-cop uh, security guard <laughs> I mean I was there the last time I was there was a couple of years ago Yeah, and they the the prick actually counted off and made people wait outside after a certain amount. Yeah. And every person was so pissed in that line. Like, are you really letting the tiny little bit of power that you have go to your head as a rent-a-cop in a DMV? Mm -hmm. I mean, give me a break. 
and not not even that. It's uh, I'll never forget the time when uh, I got my was doing the process of getting my first ever driver's license. Um, you know, you have to do the written test, and once you pass that, they they get a guy, they find the sharpest tool in the shed, and they're like, all right, and he grabs a clipboard, and he goes out to goes out to the parking lot with you to your car, and uh, they kind of take notes on how you drive. I don't know if it's the same where you guys live, but that's how it was back in Illinois. And I swear, what did they say when you pulled up in your horse and buggy, this guy didn't speak much English. I will say he's probably of Indian descent, if I were to guess. And he spoke n- no English. It was the most quiet, most awkward ride. You know, we're sitting at a red light, and I'm turning. I'm doing everything right. And there's this one driver who apparently thought I was driving too slow, so he drives right past me. And this quiet DMV person that was sitting next to me taking notes on his clipboard looks at me and he says it he says this he says cut him i'm like (laughs) wait what cut him he's like yeah go fast and cut him i'm like is this a test (laughs) so i did i sped up and i cut the guy off he's like good job you passed i'm like wait what that's it that's all that's all it was i kid you not (laughs) how not to do something I kid you not, that was the whole test. That was the whole test, dude. We went around a, a couple blocks, cut a guy off, and I, I passed my, my driving test, and we're good to go. But yeah, those guys are a joke. I can't I did say my driving. I, I borrowed a friend's car to do my driving test because I was 18 in the Army and mm-hmm. didn't have my driver's license yet. Really? Yeah. Well, you got yours kind of late. Well, the thing is, my family's poor, so uh, I don't dad, know about that. You are white, according yeah, to well, Joe you know, Biden. Bernie, San- or, uh, Bernie Sanders Bernie says Sanders. white people don't know what it's like to be poor, but Bernie Sanders could eat my dick with a cherry on top. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I totally set that one up. So we didn't have gas money to get to the DMV ever because mm-hmm. it was like an hour long drive and my dad needed the gas money to get to work yeah so that he could afford to pay to feed my fat ass and my brother's fat ass and my two my two other brothers fat asses and we weren't really fat we were skinny as hell because we didn't eat but um so we didn't have any money to he didn't have any money to, or time to take us because he had three jobs and still didn't have any money so so your friend let you borrow his car to take the driver's test? Yeah, my friend, uh, his name was Saria. He was in he was in my first unit at Fort when I went when I got to Fort Drum. He was mm-hmm. one of my buddies there, and uh, I told him, "Hey, man, I need to get my driver's license so that I don't have to have you come pick me up from work or, to work every day." He's like, "Cool, man. Here's my car keys. Let's go." <laughs> I was like, "Really?" I was like, yep. And that's a good friend. That's a solid friend right there. I mean, I guess. <laughs> what do you mean? I guess that's 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 pretty. Uh, that's I mean... a that's a cool move. <laughs> and I wouldn't let my car it's, to Chris. He ended up very trusting on his part. I'll give yeah, him that. <laughs> yeah, totally. I wouldn't let my car to Chris. Maybe for sure you, Sarge, but not Chris. <laughs> I guarantee I drive better than you. You'd be like, I see, you wouldn't I, be able I to drive on your take your viewers to work stream. <laughs> okay. If you guys I mean, aren't yeah. catching a reference, every time I stream the GTA role play mod, the uh, law enforcement GTA mod, he calls that the uh, take your viewers to work stream. So he's just a troll. He's just doing what he and, does best. Well, number one is true. Number two, um, I've seen you, you, dude. You can't stay straight in the uh, in the line for thirty seconds. I'm dr- dude. You do realize when I'm streaming <laughs> computer games, I'm not using a controller. I'm using a freaking keyboard. I'm using the W A S D uh, buttons. I don't think he cares. He doesn't care. I, 
Uh, I know for sure that, that I don't care to hear your excuse. Because he's perfect. Chris is perfect. We've we we've seen him. Uh, we've seen the train wreck that it is when he tries to put mustard on a hot dog at a ball game. So I'm sure he drives really straight. I was, I, first of all, I was holding the phone with one hand, had one hand holding a hot dog and a and a paper basket container that was smaller than the hot dog. So I didn't want my food to fall on the floor. And I'm. Are you buying this excuse, Sarge? I believe we've gone over this before. Excuses are like assholes. Everybody's got one and they all stink. I thought that was opinions. No, it's excuses. Okay, that works for me. It's both, I guess. <laughs> that works for me, too. <laughs> so. Anything else you guys <sighs> want to go over on the podcast? Well, I... I made you lose an Uno. Oh my goodness. So we and played, for those of you guys who don't watch our gaming stream, we played, uh, like I said, the last two streams was a co-stream where I streamed it with Sarge, where he streamed the same game at the same time on his channel. Our first game was Uno. Uh, and in our second game, which was last night, was Monopoly. And I will say that was probably the most stressful game of monopoly i've ever played um he is that guy sarge is that guy who will get one of every property for the sole purpose of not allowing you to complete a set <laughs> and you i will made you so bad bro <laughs> you're so mad you will be one piece away from completing your set and if this man doesn't ask for 700 percent the total value of that property that's exactly what we had to deal with last night so uh yeah it's it, it was quite frustrating but it was fun uh i will say we spent what amongst the five players we were two hours and 45 minutes in a bank and that yeah, game, something like that it was a long game but it was fun it was really fun. And who was the first to go bankrupt? We're not going to talk was, about that. Was, that was definitely we're, we're not double gonna, R. Oh, I hate you guys so much. It was, it was totally double R. And all you had to do was make one or two good deals with me, and you refused. I'm not going to give you the game. I'm not, I was going to pay you handsomely for the properties handsomely. you had. This is the same guy that traded away at both of the brown... For utility. Spaces for a for, utility. For both utilities. Let's get that right. Oh, sorry. And then, and Two then useless argued things. That the utilities were better than the brown. When the brown, you get, what, $450? And the utility, if you roll double sixes, you get 120 Great mathematician man. <laughs> you guys are such bullies. It just goes, to, just goes to show that you don't have to be smart to be in the FBI. I am not in the FBI. Prove I'm it. sick and tired of this meme showing prove up it. in my Twitter feeds. Prove it. What if do you, you can prove to, it, I'll, how do I you prove, prove it? Listen, and, and not just, this is, the question doesn't even go out just to you, but to everyone. How can I prove to you that I don't work in the FBI? Show me your W-2. Yeah, about that. See? Can't uh, prove it. The way my taxes are set up, I, I can't. Oh, you're giving the Donald Trump answer. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are yeah, so trump annoying. Trump this out. <laughs> I'm about to trump this out. That's right. You got to grab him by the utilities. <laughs> But yeah, it was fun. We're, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to doing more uh, co-streams. And, you know, board games are fun. You know, Monopoly, Uno, those are fun. But if we can venture off into other games, uh, I wish Chris like. was uh, an Xbox owner so he could join us. That'd be really cool. It'd be like the podcast. I wish you would, <laughs> it would be the buy two damn Xboxes would buy one of each. It would be the podcast boys on the same console playing the same game i think that would be really cool but wait Chris, don't you have an extra xbox or did you trade it in to get your xbox one x 
So I have one Xbox for my streaming setup, and I also have one Xbox in my living room, and that's the Xbox One X. So why you can't play on both of them at the same time? I know that. So why do you why do you need? Oh to? well, because prior to getting the Xbox One X, what I would have to do is, um, you know, my streaming room is in a different room than my living room, obviously. So. When I wanted to stream, I'd have to move the Xbox, <sighs> plug it into my capture card, and do that whole crazy. process just to play one single game. Wah, wah, wah. That's worth spending $300. Wah, wah. I actually got a good deal on the console, Chris. So, And you can find an Xbox One X. It doesn't even have to be an Xbox One X. Uh, but... he, he, but, shows, he, he shows his look. credentials and flashed his gun. Chris won't even Chris won't even ask to get it for free. All you have to do send him one of your Xboxes and then he could be on your streams and then your problem is solved. But even then he's not gonna pay for Xbox Live. He doesn't even have PSN Live. Yes, I do. I mean if he had a reason to to do it, he'd do it. I'm sure. Anyway. Uh, Chris, we got to get you on Xbox uh, one way or another. So you can join us that, and join in well, on the fun. There you go. That's one way. Well, you would. I, I, I think you would be pretty pissed when I beat you in Madden every time. Don't well, you? that's that's certainly not going to happen. Um, Chris, they don't play in pajamas. They don't. That's no, a, that your kind you're of talking about a real sport, Chris. All right. Stick to your little uh Pajama League or whatever it's I called. I would out-coach you in the football game. I guarantee you that. Okay. Oh, here we go. You keep let's, thinking that. Let's hear about fictional things more. Yeah, I know, right? Well, it's a fictional game, but I would be... I'd oh, no, that. it's it's an actual game. <laughs> it, it's exi- it exists. I have it. I have a physical copy of it. You want to see it? It's not fictional yeah. at all. <laughs> Now we're just busting his balls. <laughs> it's a fictional game. No, it's a real game. It's a real game. The game, the game exists. It's pretty real. And now he's upset. Let's be real. Let's be real. You know what? You know what's better than being real? And we'll close the podcast with this. It's it's not real. It's real. Okay. Well, you know what's better than being real? Real. R I L L. Real. Real. You know what's better than being real? Being educated? (laughs) No. Even better than being educated. Uh, I don't know. It's being woke. No. That's going to do it for this week's podcast, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, coming through and uh, continually uh, showing us the support. This is Uh, why we don't have enough viewers, because you can't speak continually. Continually. My bad. My bad, dude. (laughs) <laughs> continually I hate you so much but we, we genuinely do appreciate you for taking the time out of your day whether it's uh, you know whether you're at the gym driving whatever uh, we appreciate you uh, episode 8 coming next week and then I think we're going to have our first um, break of June with no podcast the following week but you are guaranteed to get a podcast next week so Episode 8 is this. Episode 9 coming real soon. Uh, check it out. Real. Is Sarge, real. is the real Sarge, is the real Chris, and the real Raining Ravens. Catch you guys next week. Ghost Stealers. Fine, we'll leave that in there this time. <laughs> <laughs>